development of surfaces which are non developable or oblique so these are the surfaces that you cannot cut and lay down flat on a piece of well lay down flat on a plane all right so we need to pursue or follow some tricks in this okay so that's on development keep that in mind all right so let's look at this shear hexagonal pyramid the top view is shown and so is the front view it's kind of sheared so what you do is uh, you you actually have your solid like this you just kind of shear the top surface with re with respect to the bottom surface okay that's how this solid is and we would like to develop it step 1 in development always look for true lengths true shapes because unless you do that um, it will be difficult for you to uh, develop any solid. All right, so uh, you got how many edges? One, two, three, four, four that you see, and two are behind. Okay, so one, two, three, and four. So these are the edges that you see, and then two edges are behind these two edges. Right? Can you identify edges in true length? If so, which ones are those? Which ones are those? Come again. Six, five. So this is a true length because uh, this projection is horizontal. What else? Six, seven. Six, seven. Well, that's in true length also because horizontal, horizontal. Once again, any other? One eight. Yeah. So you see this projection and the corresponding projection for this is horizontal over there. So you have a bunch of edges which are in true length. Okay. And if you wanna, if you wanna develop this, how would you wanna go about this? How would you wanna go about developing the surface? Well, start with the hinge line. You know that edge 1 8 is in true length okay and if you kind of cut your solid let's say at this edge if you cut this solid at edge 1 8 and open it up open it up perpendicular to this okay this is how your vertices 1 2 3 4 and 5 6 7 8 will appear they will be appearing on these corresponding projections right so once again scissor this edge open this surface out these vertices are going to be appearing on the respective projections okay so once you have figured these projections out start with edge 1 8 okay and follow the connectivity 1 8 is connected to what so 1 is connected to 2, 8 is connected to 7, 2 and 7 they are connected. So follow this connectivity in from, from both the views. From 8 what do we have? 7 and this length is the same as this length right? And this length from 1 what do we have? 2 okay and this length is in true length of course. So we've got 2 here, we've got 7 here. 2 and 7 are connected and keep going forward. 2 is connected to what? 3. Okay, 2, 3. And 7 is connected to what? 6. All right, so you can figure the true lengths of uh, 7, 6 and 2, 3. Okay, keep going forward because 6, 7 is going to be in true length. Both the projections are horizontal and so on. This is a relatively trivial example. One eight to one eight. Fine? Relatively trivial example. Nothing very rocket science about this. All right. 
a weird looking cone what about the what about the what well um, yeah so if you if you want to consider this to be an open uh, solid just the surface then you don't have to worry about the leads but if you want to consider that to be yeah so weird looking cone the apex is shifted not marginally but really in a weird fashion and we would like to develop this okay Now, is it possible for you to develop this weird looking cone the same way as you would develop a regular cone? Is it possible? Once again, is it possible for you to develop this cone the same way as you develop a regular cone? Yes? Assuming that's not possible for you to develop this surface, you know, in a regular fashion, what do you do? you approximate the surface and the way to approximate the surface is via triangulation it's possible to develop the surface accurately maybe not so you need to go for approximate development and the way to do that is to triangulate the surface and this is how divide the base into equal number of paths label these vertices 1 to 12 and draw generators from each of these vertices to join the apex O. Okay, so project those vertices down onto the front view. The apex over here of the cone is O. Join each of these vertices to that apex. Okay, so the surface of this weird looking cone is now approximated by a bunch of triangles on the surface of this solid so to speak okay to develop this cone now implies how you treat these triangles now yeah all right and the same procedure try to figure the two lengths or two dimensions from both of these views so we will be needing a true length diagram okay to figure out the true lengths of these edges 0 1 0 2 0 3 up to 0 12 and of course 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and so on and so forth now look at this segment here 8 9 not the arc but the segment line segment would that be in true length how about 6 7 would this be in true length so in fact all these line segments joining these vertices they will be in true length because the corresponding projections in the front view are all horizontal right step one fetish clear step two how do we figure the true lengths of 0 1 0 2 0 3 up till 0 12 is what the question is and for that we need the true length diagram now look at 0 1 and look at the corresponding projection in the front view is that in true length look at 0 7 and look at the corresponding projection of 0 7 in the front view is that in true length 0 1 is in true length and 0 7 is in true length okay well, start with a right angle triangle that I've drawn over there. To find the true lengths of the rest of these segments, what do you do? Huh? Method of rotation, right? So rotate 0, 2 to lie on the horizontal, take its projection down, or measure this length, take its projection down over here, okay? Or what you could do is you could transfer this projection over here directly and this is 0 2 in true length likewise 0 3 measure this length transfer it down here and join vertex 3 to 0 and that will give you the true length of 0 3 and so would 
the same procedure for 0, 04, 0, 05, 0, 06. Simple method of rotation. Measure these guys, transfer them onto the true length diagram. That's in true length. Okay, that's in true length. That's in true length. And that's in true length. All right? So once you have the true lengths of 0 i's, where i goes from 1 to 12, and all these other guys, you can start developing the surface. Okay? And this is how. Start with 0, 7. Okay? Draw an arc with radius the same as 7, 8 or 7, 6, depending on which side you're developing. Okay, so if it's 7, 6, so this distance is the same as this distance. And then to get this length, you need to choose what? Distance from here up till here. Yeah? 6, fixed. Number 5. With this distance, cut an arc. Okay, and with 0, 5, Cut another arc with this point of center, 5 located, and continue. Yeah? So this is not a true development, but an approximate development. And the way we did that, the way we performed this development is through triangulation. We approximated the surface of a solid by means of a bunch of triangles, by means of a set of triangles. As simple as that. All right? And OK? Everybody with me? Everybody with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Better. First example of the method of triangulation. So if you remember our discussion last time on Tuesday, you go for parallel line development in case of uh, cylinders, prisms, etc., those kinds of surfaces, solids. You go for radial line development in case of cones, pyramids, regular solids, cones, pyramids. And you go for triangulation for other complex or non-developable surfaces like in the previous example. As I said last time, they all, some way or the other, involve determination of true lengths and true shapes. Without that, you cannot do anything. This is another pretty interesting solid. The front view given, the top view given, yeah? This cross section is circular. This cross section is rectangular or square. So this surface is actually a blend between this circular cross section and a rectangular cross, cross section. Can you imagine this? All right. A linear blend between two different shaped cross sections. How do we develop this? How do we develop this? Triangle it? No, that's manufacturing. That's not developing. You're far ahead of me. First, we need to develop this. And then uh, in your TA-201, if you get a chance to make this, then make that. Yeah? So we triangulate the surface. OK? It's a non-developable surface. We triangulate that. And the way we do that is we divide the circular cross section into a bunch of parts. Okay, and we actually work with the four vertices of the square. Okay, and we join these vertices in such a way that we get triangles, okay, approximating the surfaces over here and the surfaces over here. Look at the way I'm joining the triangles now. I'm joining these vertices to get the triangles. Do you follow the red lines? 
bunch of triangles ok easier to work with the top view just transfer those triangles onto the front view all right so yeah of course I am approximating these this this uh, curve by a bunch of uh, linear segments also ok. So, triangles 11 3 4 11 4 5 5 6 12 6 7 12 7 12 9 7 8 9 1 8 9 1 9 10 so on so forth they all approximate the surface. Transfer the vertices onto the front view and transfer the connectivity as well onto the front view ok. The trick is or the uh, notion is to work with as less number of triangles as possible ok, but necessary enough number of triangles that would allow you to develop this surface properly ok. So, you do not want to compromise on the shape of the surface. What do we need next? The true lengths for that we need the true length diagram notice that all these green edges they happen to be true lengths yeah how about the rest what do you have to say about the lengths of 8 9 2 10 11 4 6 12 are they the same are they the same so just huh what same but yeah of course well, the true lens of these edges will be the same, won't they? The true lens of these edges 210, 411, 612, and 89, they would be the same. And likewise, the true lens of 110, 19, 97, 712, 12, 5, 5, 310, they will all be the same. So, we need to find the true lens of only a set of lines, and we will be happy with that. Now, all right all greens in true lens that is ok. Need to determine the true lens of edges like 1 9, 2 10 and 1 8. So, I am going to be preparing my true length diagram over here length 9 10 is in true length length 9 10 is in true length yeah To get the true length of 1 9, I would rotate this projection of 1 9 in the top view so that this projection becomes horizontal, and then I would project that down onto the front view, ok. And this length 1 9 will then be my true length huh? method of rotation, as simple as that. To get the true length of 2 10, I would rotate 2 10 so that 2 10 becomes horizontal. So, this guy here I have rotated it about vertex 9, this guy here I would rotate it about vertex 10. So, to 10 becomes horizontal I will take the projection down cell phones off please, I will take that projection down and 10 sorry 2 is here all right. So, this guy here that would be my true length to 10. What else am I left with? 1 8 1 8 is already in true length I do not need to worry about that, but if I still want to figure out the true length of that I will rotate 1 8 about 1 take its projection down and this is my true length 1 8. So, once I have the true length of all the edges of these triangles that approximate the surface I am ready to develop the surface pick a compass pick a pencil and get started start with 9 10 and of course, when you are developing make sure that you are following the connectivity here and here following the topology right 9 is connected to what 9 is connected to 8 9 is connected to 1. So, which triangle am I going for first I start with 9 10 I start with 9 10. I will go with 9 1 and I will go with 10 1. So, this triangle is something that I have now 
on my two dimensional plane. Yeah? 910, 91, 110. Okay? Which triangle now? Perhaps 1 to 10. Okay? So, with 1 as the center, 1 2 as the length, draw an arc. With 10 as the center, 10 2 as the length, draw another arc, you will get a triangle. Okay? Or you could go with 189. 189 is here. Same thing. So, you have vertex 9 here. With this length, 8 9. With 9 as center, draw an arc. With this length, 1 8. With 1 as center, draw another arc, you will get 8. Okay, and keep on following this procedure. We get 1 to 10. Make sure that you are following the con connectivity right. 1 to 10, and then the next triangle would be 2, 3, 10, and the next one will be 3, 10, 11. Next one, 3, 4, 11. And then 11, 4, 5. Keep on continuing. This is straightforward. So, the challenging part for you is this two length diagram and understanding the fact that you have to approximate a non developing surface using a set of triangles. Yeah? You cannot. But cutting out a circle is not a problem, but uh, your question has a context. What is the context? This diagram in the previous in the shared code. Yeah. We approximate the number of triangles and then we cut out. Not the shared, well, shared cone, yes, yes, yes. Same way, the circle is considered to have many triangles. Yeah. Is it possible to cut out a perfect circle? Well, um, the accuracy of development will depend on the number of triangles you use to represent the surface. The more the number of triangles you use, the better the accuracy of this development will be. Again, so merely cutting out a circle out of a piece of paper is not a problem. Right, so if you just want to cut this circle out from a piece of paper, perfectly fine. But if you are wanting to cut this circle with reference to the entire surface around it, that's the context. Now, look at all these vertices lying on the circle 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay, and then you have to, of course, um, have one more triangle over here, I think. Yeah. Right? So these guys, where would they lie? So if you if you close, if you glue this 98, if you glue this 98 with that 98, and if you kind of close the surface, all those guys they will be approximating a circle from this example. Yeah? So my point is if you want, so if I understand your question correctly. If you want this part of the surface to be a precise circle, is this what you want? Is this what you want? If you want this part of the surface to be a precise circle, you will have to have more number of points approx approximating that circle. And then, well, I mean, you have to account for those points now by means of triangles. Those points on this circular curve over here, they have to participate in triangles. They have to be a part of the triangles. Thinking and analyzing. Hence, well, you have lab number 13, and then you have your exam. It better not end. And even after this course, your thinking and analyzing should not end. C4. M4.
Didn't you say M for mid-sims, M for marks, M for money, M for what? Math. C for? Chaku. This is Brahma Gyan. Brahma Gyan. Nothing to do with TA 101. But everything to do with thinking and analyzing that I will share with you. If you want to take it, take it. If you don't want to take it, fine. C for contentment, satisfaction. One word that each and every one of you is looking for throughout your life. Yeah? Does, does anybody disagree? C for contentment. C for currency, money. Many of you guys think the more money you have in your pocket, the more content you are. Is that true? Louder? Not true. But still, trust me, once you're in your fourth year, you're going to be going for companies who are going to be paying you higher. Okay? Which you should not. You should be going for companies that offer you jobs of your choice. C for choice. Your choice. That's where things change. The more choices you make, the more confidence you get. C for confidence. The more choices you make, the more confidence you get in life. The more compromises you make, okay, compromises would be like without you wanting to do something, you're forced to do something, some way or the other. The more compromises you make, the less confidence you get. Two factors which are going to be important throughout your life after your 26 or 27, maybe later. Carrier, C. Your spouse, your companion, C. Your life will revolve around these two factors. You choose the right carrier, you're content. You choose the right companion, you're content. You choose the wrong carrier. You choose your wrong spouse or companion. C words. Children, direct source of contentment. Look at a one-year-old, you like to hold him or hold her in your hands. Yeah? C for college. You can figure out a bunch of C words that if you cogitate about, if you think and analyze, and this is why perhaps subconsciously I named this course Think and Analyze 101. So if you think and analyze about these bunch of C words, you will see how these words might change your life later on. Keep brooding. Finally, you always say, you know, the politicians aren't good. They are doing... No, it's, it's a democratic country. I can say whatever I want. Well, within limits. So you guys tend to censure people. You guys tend to blame people, you know, for things which are not right around you. You guys want to change. See word. You guys want to change for things to be better around you. You are the change. You take a right step forward and the world will follow you. You don't wait for the world to take the right step forward and then you follow the world. It's the other way around. You take the right step forward and the world follows. Brahma again. Impressed? Imbibed? Taken in? All right, so with that said, lab number 13 is on. Your exams are on. On the 26th, 9 to 1. A single minute late, doors are closed. Keep that in mind for both badges. No sharing of equipment, information, anything during the exam or in between when the badges are getting or when the badges are in transition. Anything else? It was a pleasure teaching you. And for that, thank you in advance.